this video, I'm going to show you how to use Azure AI Foundry models in Copilot Studio prompts. So the one thing that you should be aware of is that you can go into Azure in something called Azure AI Foundry, and you can create your own implementations of large language models that you choose. And you can choose the model you want. You can choose to fine tune it. You can do all kinds of things with these particular models. One of the things that people have been asking for for a long time is how can I go build these models or uh, tune these models to the way I want inside of Azure and then consume those as a model that I want to use inside of Copilot Studio? Well, great news that is now something you can do and you can do it in two different places or two different ways inside of copilot studio we'll start with the first one on the left here which is to bring your own model to prompts what this is is it's going to give you the ability to use what we used to call ai builder or prompts to be able to use your own model that you've built inside of Azure AI Foundry and be able to use it as the base model to execute your prompt. The other option is bring your own model to response generation. And response generation is going to be when Copilot Studio is going to generate a response or create a question or the default model that it uses whenever it uses to summarize uh, information on knowledge and things of that nature. And so this is going to give you the full capability to bring industry models and all the different things that you've been wanting to use inside of Azure AI Foundry directly in Copilot Studio. And yes, it will consume the consumption from the Azure AI Foundry uh, SKU, not the Copilot Studio SKU when you do this. So just be aware that there will be an Azure charge if you go through and you do this. In this video, I'm gonna focus on only the bring your own model prompts. I'll release another video on response generation later. So here we are inside of Copilot Studio. And again, this is just a uh, Azure demo tenant that I am using. Uh, it's just a demo agent that I have that I use for different demos. And what you're going to see in this is that one of the things I have done is I've actually added a topic inside of this. And that topic specifically is this job interview assistance topic. So let's just take a look at this really quick and you'll see that basically this is just a tool that's going to give you guidance on how to prepare for job interviews for internal jobs that you might be apl applying for. So with that, we can go down and take a look at adding in a prompt. Now, how did I actually add this prompt? You can just come in to hit the plus mark, go to it, go to add a tool and you can say create a new prompt now in the case of this one i've already created that prompt and we will take a look at that particular prompt now what am i passing into that prompt i'm passing in activity.txt now what is activity.txt and how do i get that if you click here and you go to system and you'll see that there's activity but if you you can just type text if you want and it will uh, get you there as well but this is basically the last thing that someone said to the agent so what you're going to want to do is be able to pass that in as the query that we're wanting to answer this particular question that someone specifically asked about a job interview so that's how we can pass in the last thing the person said into the agent itself or uh, collect that as the query that we're looking for. Now, why does it have query here? How did it even get here? So if we go in and let's take a look at the actual prompt that we created, you're going to see that this is what you used to call AI Builder, but now is really part of Copilot Studio Core. And what you're going to see here is that I'm saying use, and then I put this slash in. Anytime inside of this that you want, you can say add text or something like that into your prompt. And in this case, I told it I'm looking for a string of text called query, which is how I created that input that said query before. And I'm telling it here that basically I just want it to help out. I just wanted to respond concisely and just provide the answer to the question uh, provided in the user's query. 
and I'll just back out my little slash right there. And you'll see here that one of the things that I can do is you can go through and test it, but and you'll get a result here. But what we're really interested in is the model. And notice here that we the model that we have, which is Grok3. You'll actually see we've got some models that are already available to people uh, today so that you can go in and you can use those. But if you'll notice down here on the bottom, we have this plus mark that we can use. And you can see here that Azure AI Foundry. And I can come in and I can add one if I'd like, but you can see that we're using Grok3. Now we could have used one of these others that I've already got loaded in uh, as well, as in like DeepSeek or GPT 4.1. All of these would be available as well if we so desired. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and just cancel out of this really quick so that we can see what else we did. And basically I said, oh, on the prediction output, it's going to give me something that's called a response and the response is going to be a record. Now, with that, you should be aware that when you get a response in a record format, what you're gonna find is that there are variables now and you can see the response variables that come in back. And you can see we could have a record, but we don't really want a record, we want a string of text. So what you're looking for is you can get response finish reason, and you can also get the response.text, which is what the output really is that it's saying is what it should say back. So with that, I've kind of got this wired up to say, okay, I wanna use Grok3 as the mechanism to answer the question that about a job a job interview or things about me being able to prepare for a job interview. So what I'm going to do just to demonstrate this is I'm just going to ask a very simple question. We're not really trying to get too crazy here, but I'm just going to ask what should I wear to my interview? Now, when I ask this question, you're going to see that what it did, here I'll zoom it out just a bit for you you're going to see that it's going to go through, it's going to answer this question uh, using the job interview assistance topic. Now, interestingly enough, I might decide that I want to change this. So how, how would I go about actually going and adding a different model in? Well, let's go through the process of how you actually add a model to be available here. So one of the things that I've went ahead and I've done is I've added a new model. So le let me flip over to Azure AI Foundry really quick and let's take a look there. Okay, so now we're inside of Azure AI Foundry and you can see here that there's a model catalog that you have available. And we've got all these different models that we might wanna choose from. And one of the ones that I went ahead and set up, if I scroll down to the bottom here, you can see all the different ones that I have. And so an example is I actually added one for 5.4, uh, which is one of Microsoft's uh, implementations of a model that I wanna play with here. So what I wanna do with this one is I need to make sure that I understand how to add this one into Copilot Studio. So let's go back over to Copilot Studio and let's change from using Grok3 to actually using Pi4. So now that we're inside of Copilot Studio, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the topic for the job interview assistance, and we're gonna open up that model again uh, that we did or that custom prompt that we were building. And notice that we've got our model up here. And what I'll do is if you didn't know there's this uh, double arrow that you can use that kind of helps you grow this out. So if you want to get a little bit more real estate. And what I can do is click on the little down arrow on Grok3 here and say I want to add a model. Now this is where you're going to need to do a little bit of copy and paste and you need information from your model that you had in the Azure AI Foundry implementation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip back over to Azure AI Foundry and let's go get the model deployment name. So the model deployment name will actually be right here for you. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy that. And then we'll go back and pop that in. And we'll pop this in here for the deployment name. Now you'll have to get the base model name and the base model name, the easiest way to get that out of uh, Azure AI Foundry is, I'll show you where that is. So we're gonna flip back over. And notice that if you come in here, you can see that they have 
the different base model names that are available. And if you start looking around, you'll get a good bit of information here. But the base model name for this is right here. You can see it. And each of the different models, you'll need to look at these and be able to find this particular information. But you're really looking for this model name. So I'm going to flip back over and let's put our model name in. Now, you'll notice that I conveniently named both of these the same thing. You don't have to do that. Your deployment name is normally not equivalent to your base model name, but just for the simplicity of this demo, I did it this way. Now, I'm gonna jump back because we need to get the model endpoint URL. Now, where is the model endpoint URL? Well, it's this right here. And luckily, we've got a nice little button right here that makes it where it's easy to copy it. Uh, so just click on your button here and just copy it. And we'll just drop, drop this in right here. Then we need to get our API key. And our API key, we're gonna drop back over. We'll grab our API key. And we drop our API key in and we just hit connect. Now, behind the scenes, what this is actually doing is it's actually creating a connection inside of the power platform for this particular service. And you'll see here it says now it's connected for 5.4. So now that we've done that and we've saved, we've got 5.4 here, we just need to save this off. Now I'm going to go ahead and save this off and let it uh, process. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go back and ask the same exact question again. And when we do that, I think this will be a lot more effective because the 5-4 response might be a little bit different than what we get from Grok. So as you can see, I'm just going to copy what we already had here. I'm just going to drop it in and just say the exact same question. So we're going in the same conversation. We're going to the exact same topic and we're asking the exact same question again. And let's look and see what's the difference in the response that we get. And you'll see the response is very different. And the reason it's so different is because of the fact that we changed the underlying response model for this. So now we are actually using 5.4 as the response model. So hopefully you can see there's tons of value that you can find by just using Azure AI Foundry models in Copilot Studio prompts. I hope you found a ton of value in this video today and for more videos like this around Copilot Studio, like and subscribe to my channel and as always, you can try Copilot Studio at aka.ms slash try Copilot Studio.